So today's episode comes to you courtesy of Michael, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support for amazing patrons like Michael, so again, Michael, thank you so much. And for Michael's Commanders 2 Sense episode, Michael chose Gold Guard Commanders in 10 seconds or less. So in Commander, there are a ton of Commanders to pick from, and it can take forever to see which one you might want to build around. So on this episode, I'm going to try to simplify that process by tackling as many Commanders as I can in one episode. I'm going to be going through every single Golgari commander and trying to summarize them and what they do and how you might want to build around them in just 10 seconds or less. Will I not be able to cover every single aspect of certain commanders? I mean, yeah, it's 10 seconds. That's not a lot of time at all. And I do talk fast, but not that fast. But I'll cover as much as I can in those 10 seconds, hopefully help you with your decision. And now, get your 10 second timers ready because it's time to jump into it. First up, there's Lathra who says, Hey, do you like Elf Tribal? Do you like making a lot of Elves with Elf Tribal? Do you like draining your opponents with all your Elves in Elf Tribal? Great, let's do just that. And then there's Marin who's all about creatures dying so you get experience counters so you can get those creatures back so they can die again for more experience counters and then they can die again and come back and die again and come back and then you get Spore Frog and then your opponents, uh, they probably quit. Next up, there's Sharafang who asks you the question, Hey, would you like every single one of your tokens to have a squirrel stapled onto it? Yeah, who wouldn't? So cool, take those squirrels and take out creatures. Awesome. Moving on, there's Dina who says, Hey, do you like tea? Just kidding. Do you like gaining life? Awesome, because we can drain our opponents incredibly quickly by gaining life. And sure, we can sacrifice creatures, but mostly just gain life to drain. And then how about the Gerog monster who wants your lands to go into your graveyard from anywhere? So yeah, deck more salvage plus this plus discard outlet equals scary, scary, scary times for your opponents. Draw your deck, have fun. Or how about Hapatra, who's all about spreading love and hugs all across the battlefield. And by love, I mean minus one, minus one counters. And by hugs, I mean snakes. Next up, Beldros can make you an absurd amount of tokens, but that's not even the good part. The good part is you can untap all your lands, which is every single green deck's dream to do. So yeah, have fun with all that mana. And speaking of dreams, well, Slimefoot has a dream, and I'm not talking about being on the Weatherlight. I'm talking about pinging your opponents to death whenever your Saprolings die. So Saprolings die equals punishment death. And speaking of death, well, Belby is basically dead being an Oiphyrexian zombie elf. Regardless, she's all about, hey, everyone losing life and getting mana based off of life, and then not about Phyrexians, but about Eldrazi. Eldrazi! Next up, Skullbriar is all about counters. Getting counters, keeping the counters on it, even when it's in the command zone. Comes back, counters. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh no, minus one, minus one counters. You can't cast Skullbriar anymore. That's bad, 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 bad. And then an equally gross and very confusing that it's actually a commander. How about Gris the Hunger Tide, which is a planeswalker that's also a 1 1 insect when it's not on the battlefield? Insect tribal, yes. Next up, we've got a chef with Guyom, a master chef who makes really, really good food. Food that actually makes creatures sleepy because they ate too much because it was so good, but it makes them indestructible and hardy, but also sleepy. Or how about Karth the Lion, which cares about Planeswalkers? Er, uh, super friends. Whatever you want to call it. Get Planeswalkers, have them die, get more Planeswalkers, activate abilities better. Okay. Speaking of dying, there's Gerard, who likes to take your creatures and say, you know what, you'd be better at doing dying and draining all of our opponents based on your power. So big creatures dying equals good. And speaking of big creatures, well, Dust can make creatures massive by giving them counters based on the amount of life you gain in this turn and the amount of life you lost in the turn. But Wizards is very mean in the fun police, so they made it sorcery speed. Moving on, Old Stick Figures is a very, very, very weird name with a very, very, very weird deck built around it where you just essentially get certain creatures in your graveyard specifically every single time to combo and win. Speaking of graveyards, there's Abomination of Llanowar, which cares about your graveyard and elves in your graveyard and also elves in play, but probably more so elves in your graveyard. Just get a ton of elves in your graveyard, swing out, have fun, goodbye. And speaking of elves, well, there's a Phyrexian zombie elf, yet another one with Gliss of the Traitor, which actually cares about artifacts because elves don't care about artifacts until they are dead. Or Phyrexians. Moving on, there's Grismald, which cares about, well, nope, not artifacts, well, potentially artifacts. It depends. If it's a creature token that's an artifact, it cares about it, but it just cares about creature tokens in general, because when they die, this gets bigger. And speaking of getting bigger, so Rolf the Wolf, which is hard to say, can get absolutely massive, and then you just take all those counters that are on it and go away, and then everything that your opponents control and you control goes away. Moving on next up, there's Mazarak, which is going to have things get sacrificed, and then get a ton of counters on things, and that's basically it. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, you know? Yeah. Speaking of straightforward and one that can actually lose your friends in a very straightforward way, there's Nath, which says, hey, do you want to make your opponents discard and you get some L's, but mostly, you know, you make your opponents discard and then they get upset with you and then they leave. Next up, there's Hogak, which is an incredibly useless commander unless you are Alec in my playgroup. And in that case, it's incredibly deadly and you need to take it out right now. 
Up next, there's Ishkana, and if you have arachnophobia, you're not going to want to play this because it's a spider, and it's a spider tribal commander. So no, don't play that. Next up, there's Chevel, Chevil, Chevil, Chevel. Yeah, uh, uh, puts bounty counters on creatures and benefits you when they die. Yeah. Next up, there's Frawl's the Scar Stripe, which gives every single creature card in your graveyard scavenge, which is a kind of uh, a weird um, throwback mechanic that's not really all that great. Next up, Babala Saga has you say in Hakuna Matata so you can sacrifice permanents left and right without worrying about it and you get some benefits if they're different kinds of permanents. And then Savra says, hey, I'm sacrificing creatures. Aren't you going to be cool and sacrifice creatures too? Or, you know, maybe able to sacrifice creatures and just gain some life and make you jealous that I'm gaining life. And there seems to be a pattern here with, you know, life, death, graveyards, all that jazz in Golgaria zone. He's like, hey, you got a lot of creatures in your graveyard. Awesome. Here's a ton of insects. Gross. Sacrifice them for stuff. And then there's Thelon of Havenwood, who cares about funguses and fungi. So interesting. Spore counters and stuff. Then there's best friends forever, Gorm and Virtus. Gorm says, hey, I'm attacking. Come with me, Virtus. And Virtus says, I'm getting through. I'm going to stab you with this tiny knife. And then half your life is gone. Up next, there's Blax, which cares about all the creepy crawlies. That's right. We're talking about pets, bats, insects, snakes, and spiders. And you can even search for Blax. Doesn't that sound fun? Up next, there's Farika, which is pretty much the weakest of all the gods of Theros. And yeah, I mean, she can give people gifts of snakes. Here's a snake. And then old Rutstein's asking you, What are you buying? But he's not asking you what you're selling. He really just cares about what you're buying. And whatever's on top is what you're buying. You get something. Moving on, there's Sapling of Kalfenor, which is somehow indestructible, even though the tree it came from, which is Kalfenor, is not indestructible. That makes no sense to me. Regardless, it cares about toughness and gaining life and getting things up the top. Yeah. Valentine the Dean is saying Dean you later because you're never going to play that one. And Lizette's really not all that much better. But uh, sure, gain life, get counters on your creatures. Why not? Next up, Grackma is all about slowly getting counters and then eventually dying and giving you another Hydra that's probably just going to die. And then Amori can reduce the cost of whatever kind of spell you want. And usually people are going to pick creatures. But um, artifact storm anyone in Golgari? Yeah, that seems pretty spicy. Next up, Sister of Stone Death has an incredibly high mana cost, but you can do some pretty gross things with it, basically getting rid of creatures that your opponents have and getting them for yourself. Next up, there's Shestra, Death Whisper, who is really, really, really bad. I mean, like, terrible. I mean, like, draw a card every now and then bad. And then Plukronos is a weird kind of Hydra that instead of when its heads get chopped off, you, you know, it grows heads back. It doesn't do that. No, it doesn't. It just loses them. Next up, there's Harry, who cares about elves, you know, being the king of Scamfar, and uh, also cares about uh, one specific planeswalker. And then there's Vati Ildal, which is actually a very metal name with a very metal ability to make something incredibly small, either power or toughness. Next up, there's Storev, who likes to store things. You take things in graveyards, you get them back sometimes, it's not that great at all. Next up, there's Reese the Exiled, who is exiled in embarrassment because it's so much worse than the other version of Reese. And yeah, this one just gains life. Who cares? Boo. Moving on, there's Naname as one, which is a 12 mana commander that would have an ETB, except it specifies from your hand. So you don't get it. You just get an 8-8. And finally, there's Kaga, Shadow Archdrude, who cares about milling and getting things out of your graveyard, but it doesn't care enough to do those things well. So that's why it's last in this list and in Golgari. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thank you again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.